2002 Dodge Ram van. I go through tires like nothing. That's the outer. That's the inner. You see how thin? I mean, these tires are like two months old. So I've had three alignments done over the past five years for nothing. They take your money and they can't handle it. So apparently I have a camber problem. I'm going to do this the old school way with a level. You see it? So I need to make the adjustment. Make it level. So it looks like I got to bring it out like a quarter of an inch. In order to do that, I have to loosen these two bolts and bring this upper control arm out which is not going to be easy to do. So apparently there's a tool for it, which I don't have and can't access. So I'm just going to make it myself. Let's do it. All right, so I need a piece of this C channel here at four inches. Actually, just to make sure I'm going to go three and a half. See what size I need for this steel lentil. Basically measuring beyond those two bolts. So I'm gonna go seven and a half. Seven and a half inches. C channel is going to do is ride over this piece of frame here. Get it in there. All right, so it's still too wide. I gotta go a little more narrow, and then I'll have two bolt or one bolt or two bolts here that'll go into the frame to hold it. And then so I gotta cut that a little bit shorter. Then I need the lentil on top and a bolt to go through the lentil to here and a bolt to go through the lentil to here. And those are going to be my adjustment bolts to, to slide it out. See if we can handle this. Alright, so I made some minor adjustments to the piece. See this back lip here? I cut it off at the front and I cut two ears off. See if it'll fit now. Now it 
fits. All right, so now what I got to do in the back here, I got to drill a hole or two and then weld a nut and weld a nut. So this way I can put the two bolts through and they'll come through as you tighten them and hold it to the frame. So let's do it. Changed my mind. Let's, let's weld the two pieces up first, then I'll drill the holes. the other side. While that's charging, I drilled the three holes. I'll show you my poopy welds. And I welded three nuts and bolts on there. Let me cool it off. So now this one here is going to be to clamp it to the frame. And these two are to make your camber adjustment. I'm going to have to get a socket on them. Let's see if we can do it. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Poopy welds. But hopefully it'll work. Alright, so the tool I just made is attached. As you can see, this bolt here, once I tighten that, it's going to push out on this and bring the whole upper control arm out. And then there's a... I'm going to have to adjust. But first things first, I got to loosen this bolt and loosen this bolt here and loosen the two sides. Then we're going to see if we can make this adjustment. And I said level earlier, but I meant plumb. I'm trying to make this plumb. So that last clip I did, that was last Sunday, the day after Christmas. This is a week later. Well, Saturday night anyway, the following Saturday. So I had to stop the video because the tool failed. It didn't break. The welds didn't break. Here it is here. But you see how this flange here bent? See how it's bent? So what happened was I was setting up the shot for you guys. I was going to set you up to see the level as I'm adjusting it. And as this was on there, 
I loosen those two bolts back there to make the adjustment. And this flipped up and there was a couple of bangs. So apparently I didn't take into consideration the force that's required to make a camber adjustment. So I gave up. But in the process, I found out that those two top bolts here, these camber adjustment bolts were too loose. I stuck this breaker bar on there and there was no effort at all to loosen them. So maybe he did do the adjustment, he just didn't tighten them. I mean, that's a very important process to tighten those bolts after, after the alignment's done. And apparently he didn't do it. So I went online and searched and searched and searched and I found a place called Freedom Racing. And bam, they had the tool, the Miller 8199 tool right here. So let's look at the two of them. Now you gotta understand, I made mine just looking off of a picture. So my bolts aren't too far off, but you see the Miller 8199 has two to attach it to the frame. And I went cheap and put one. And apparently this is too thin. Let's take a look at this one, see the difference? This is a solid piece of steel. It's not even welded it's just a solid piece oh yeah it is i see it it's two different parts but still it's a solid piece of steel see if you can see that miller 8199 that's what you need to make the camber adjustment so let's try this again i'm gonna set it up but now as you notice from those couple bangs and from my tool not working now it's worse because the force on the wheel is always pushing back. So I need to bring it back out and tighten those bolts properly. Let's see if we can handle this with the right tool. And I'm just gonna have to use a level cause I don't have a laser system. I looked it up, it's 40 grand. Nope, can't afford it. All right, so the tool's attached. I'll show you the tool. Try to squeeze in there. up in there and I got the socket on there already the ratchet I don't even know if you can see it I'll show you from the other side there you go. You can see that. all right so now I'm going to set you up over here so you can watch the level bubble and having my phone down there, I might be able to watch it too. So we'll see what happens. But first things first, I gotta loosen these two bolts here. Now that the tool's on there tight, I'm gonna record this time and hopefully I'm not gonna hear any bangs. Let's see. All right, here we go, number one. didn't retighten them. I know I told you how loose they were, but I retightened them. So that's why they're a little tough to loosen now. But they're still not torqued. I'm going to torque them at the end. I believe it's 220 foot pounds. All right. So the tool just moved. That's not good. The socket. Uh, let's see what happens here loose now that one's loose everything's wiggling around but I didn't hear any bang so that's good oh great the sockets right where I can get pinched if something happens and I'm trying to dig it out I'm not a fan of this breaker bar this breaker bar here when the sockets on there if it bends funny the socket falls off you see it stupid I won't be buying this again but apparently the bolts are loose both of them 
Yep, I can move them by hand. All right, now I'm gonna set you up so you can watch the level bubble. All right, let's see what we can do. Just took me 15 minutes to set that camera up like that. Uh, there's cords in the way. All right, so I might have to put this in hyper mode because it looks like I'm going to be doing a lot of cranking. not too bad it's going faster than I thought all right so the key is to get the bubble in the center and that'll be plum but apparently you want this positive camber 3.5 degrees so before I was negative this time I want to be a little bit positive I'm not sure how to do the degrees like this so I'm just gonna have to try to guess I'm just gonna give it a little bit. And that looks pretty good, I'm gonna go with that. All right, so I got the torque wrench locked at 220 foot-pounds. Let's torque these bad boys down. Yep, he definitely didn't have him torqued at 220 foot-pounds. See what happens. Maybe I'll do another video in a couple of months or something. Do an update. See if the tires get any worse. Hopefully not. Hopefully they can straighten out. Because you see how much tread is there on the outside. And what's not there on the inside. Hopefully this does the trick. If not, I guess I'm going to have to find somebody else, some other alignment shop, something. Wasn't too bad, though, with the right tool. I didn't take my tool serious enough. That's the problem. Got to think, think a little more next time.